Yo everyone, what's going on? All right, you know what this video is about. Uh, you know, after owning the Fractal FM3 and being a big fan of it for the last two years, I did just sell it. And I wanted to make this video. So if you own like a Fractal, Kemper, Quad Cortex, Helix, really any of these units, uh, or you think about picking one up, then I strongly encourage you to hear me out on what I have to say about digital hardware units in the modern day 2023 as we are right now. This is not some clickbait subject. I've had this discussion with a bunch of other studio people and guitarists, and they all seem to share the same sort of feelings and agree with me on this. So I definitely thought this was a video worth making because people who don't own this gear generally have FOMO, like what if I had a Quad Cortex or what if I had an FM3 or a Kemper or all that sort of stuff. Not all of us have the luxury to check this stuff out. So I wanted to make a video and uh, maybe this will help shed some light on the units. All right, let's start, let's start positive. Let's talk about the FM3. So amazing unit, uh, arguably one of the best out there, probably my personal favorite, uh, you know, top tier, amazing amp selection, modeling, routing. It's like an amp tweaker's dream. It has everything there for you. But at the end of the day, it was a box that added more complexity and messing around than all the benefits it gave. So what do I mean by that? Let's talk about uh, workflow and recording with the FM3. So in general here, uh, my guitar goes into the DI unit. One of the outputs from that goes directly to my interface. And for the FM3, another output goes to the FM3 where you know everything gets processed, goes to the uh, interface which runs into the door. So for everything that I record with the FM3, I have two tracks running. One is the DI and one is the FM3 tone. Now that's just one signal. So if I'm recording left and right tracks, uh, you know what would be two is now four tracks. So let's just say you've uh, recorded a bunch of tracks and you wanna now tweak the tone. You can't tweak the wet tone because it's already committed. Uh, you know, you either have mixing tools like EQs or whatever at your disposal, but you can't actually like change amps, change IRs. It's just like the mixing side of things. The realistic option is to take that DI track and reamp it back into the FM3 and start redialing in something, you know, to suit the mix. Once you get a tone that works, you then have to print each track in real time back into the session. So if it's just like a left and right track and it's a three minute track, three minutes here, three minutes there. But if you have like, you know, quad tracking or leads going on, every every extra thing adds that real time component of tracking back in. Now compare this to an amp sim workflow where you're only recording one track and the processing is sort of happening on top of that. Now this means you can just track something and when you're done, you pull up the amp sim again, chop and change the tone if that's something that you wanna do. There's no need for reamping and waiting for things to happen. When you have a setup like this, the only reason you wanna be reamping the DI is if you have real amps. And if that's the case, then yes, it's the same thing. You need to uh, dial things in and wait in real time while you track. But the bonus there is that it's going through the actual analog amps. Let's talk about the uh, the sound quality of amp sims. So many of them these days sound amazing. In fact, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a uh, modern amp sim that sounds bad. You know, I find it all pretty much comes down to flavor of sound, features, price. You know, I've tested heaps of them lately and I'm actually constantly blown away by how good things are sounding. Now, when I compare the sound of an amp sim, just the sound to the FM3's amp modeling, I don't honestly think that you can say the FM3 blows the amp sim out of the water. I would say, you know, the end result that you're getting from uh, both of them is pretty much on par. If you like what an amp sim is doing, you're not really gonna get much better out of the FM3. Now, where the Fractal shines is it's giving you all of those amp options under the sun at your fingertips. You know, you can change the, the bias of an amp, the tubes, the power soak, uh, you get the standard tone stack, whatever the amp normally has, those are the options that you have. You get extended tone stack, all those sorts of things are in there. The Fractal just has so many parameters and you can pretty much push and pull the tone uh, to the point that you're basically designing your own idealized amp sim model. But the counterpoint to all that awesomeness is like if you already have a particular amp sim that you like the sound and what it's doing, then none of that is really helpful. If you can just turn an amp sim on, strum away and be like, that's the perfect tone, then who, how can you argue that? That's just a good sound to use. Now, when we talk about uh, value for money, the FM3 is like 1100 US dollars. Here, it's like 23, $2,400, um, cause hashtag Australia things, you know. Amp sims, they range from like literally free, you can get high quality dead set free amp sims to like, I don't know, on average amp sim, let's just highball it at 70, $80 seems to be the, the upper echelon for amp sim prices. 
Um, you can get subscriptions like a steel amp hub that's 10 bucks a month, cheaper with annual, even cheaper on sale. So you can get uh, high quality paid amp sims for quite a low price as well. I know I'm rambling a bit, but I'm just trying to build context to all of this. So let's take a look at the gear that I have here. So, you know, like a lot of people several years ago, I just had a crappy audio interface and, you know, some crappy amp sims from yesteryear. I had owned an Axe FX2 and was like, I'll grab an FM3. This will be awesome. It can do a lot of things. Uh, absolutely amazing. How good is this? Use it for ages in its default state. But because I'm a guitarist and we are, you know, constantly on the quest for spending money, I started grabbing uh, real amps like the 5150-350 watt I got there, 6505 Plus, a Mesa Triple Rect, uh, TSL 100. I picked up a high quality load box, the Creation Audio MW1 uh, DI and reamp unit. So the overlap between what these uh, dedicated analog units were doing versus what the FM3 was doing kind of meant that like bit by bit the FM3 was getting sidelined. I guess you could say it's like it's like a credit to the FM3 being your one-stop shop. Um, but if you're like me and you start uh, getting analog pieces of gear, it starts to put these things into a weird place. And once again, it's not just the FM3. The same can be said about the Quad Cortex. That can be your one-stop shop. But if you start building up other things, you know, it, it's less important in the grand scheme of things. But so this is where my final headspace was at with everything. I really grew to dislike the extra routing and track count involved. Using the FM3 workflow, I hated dialing in a rough tone and then, you know, having to reamp multiple tracks in real time. It's like the drawbacks of using analog gear without the benefit of using analog gear, if that makes sense. Now, people always, well, fractal users, te technically they're people as well. They always say that, you know, the fractal amp modeling is perfect. It's, it is very, very good, amazing. It's not perfect because, you know, this line of uh, thinking is child's play to debunk because if they were perfect, then you wouldn't see constant firmware updates upgrading amp models here and there. They're obviously very, very good, arguably some of the best in the game, but they're not perfect. And, you know, ultimately, they're just digital models. Now, even with all that, I contemplated keeping the FM3 to use just as an effects only unit. I could throw it into effects loops of the real amps that I have here. But I thought about it and I would still be committing that stuff in real time, which has its own challenges. And once again, being pragmatic about streamlined workflows, if I'm reamping through an amp and load box and want just like a digital delay or reverb, I can do that in Reaper. And of course, if I want that analog experience, then I gotta go grab some analog pedals anyway. So the FM3, once again, it's doing nothing unique and it's just plugins are more convenient at that point. Even with all of this, even like my whole rational self is like the FM3 just doesn't cut it. I still wanted to keep it. And you know why? It's just because I liked it. It's fun. I like checking out the new firmware. It was really awesome to use. But realistically, it just wasn't being used in productions. So look, in an ideal world, Fractal would just have VST versions of all their modeling and I'd be lapping that up on day one. Amps, cabs, effects, like insane routing. I'm here for all of it. But Amp Sims on DIs, it's just a great solution. It's such a streamlined way of working. Reamping through real amps is also great. It's a great solution for the uh, full analog experience. But for now, anything like a FM3, Quad Cortex, uh, Kemper, it, it's just like a cool, fun thing to mess around with and occasionally use for reamps and that sort of thing. I, I sort of view them as a luxury. I, you know, I'm trying to just build up my arsenal here. I want to get like 37 Evertune guitars, different tunings, different strings, a couple basses. I want that back wall to look like JHS, just be full of tons and tons of pedals. But you know, the gear quest is never ending. So if you have something that's just sitting there and not really being used, you sort of have to ask yourself like, can I free up this resource and maybe revisit that at a later point in time? What, I, what I'm really hoping for is uh, maybe when the Axe 4 gets announced, I'm gonna be super tempted to look at it. I'm gonna be all over it. I really hope that they look at some kind of uh, thing that like Universal Audio have done where you use the hardware, some sort of real-time DSP, a satellite, um, where you can just, I just want to be able to use the plugins in the door. I don't care if it's like coupled to their hardware. I'd much prefer it to just be a VST, a subscription or some sort of iLock based thing. But even if that's tied to hardware, I would jump back to the hardware just to be able to use uh, the plugins in a normal VST sort of way. There we go, that's my whole story. Uh, you know, TLDR, I sold it because workflow reasons, great unit, just wasn't using it. It didn't really fit 
what was going on here. It just took a little bit extra time to get going. Standalone, great, great units. And of course, if you're gigging, rehearsing, leaving the house with it, taking it here, taking it there, that's a whole other conversation, you know? Things like the Helix, Head Rush, Quad Cortex, Kemper Stage, uh, FM3, FM9, so many great floor solutions that deserve its own video. I'm really just looking at this stuff from the lens of you know, a practicing or recording sort of point of view. So yeah, if you're using it, if you're like, yeah, those are all fair points, but I'm using it for a gig. Yeah, completely, completely different use use case. But yeah, other than that, interested to know if you're feeling the same thing. Are you doing the same stuff here? Are you using the fractal gear in a different way that I'm not thinking of? Interested to know, drop it in the comments below. And hey, if you stuck around to the end of the video, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe to stay up to date with everything that's going on here. Uh, so look, I'm gonna miss the fractal. I really, really enjoyed the stuff and I wanna get back to it, but I just, hope that they can bring something into the modern day with VSTs. That's my hope anyway. So as always, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video and I'll catch you on the next one.